Hello Booktube, this is part 26 of my 2022 library tour. This is the third part of my science fiction and fantasy uh, set of books. Um, so let's get going. The first book is another Terry Brooks novel. This is Genes Genesis of Shannara, uh, Armageddon's Children. This is one of the billion Shannara books Terry Brooks has put out. Um, the Shannara series are um, inspired by the Lord of the Rings. They're, I guess you could knock off or pastiches that have gone on for 50 years now and is a massive multi-part super epic series that I read uh, some of the books when I was younger um, and they were, I thought they were good, but I haven't revisited them since, and I have not gotten to this book at all. Picked it up from the Friends of the Library book, uh, book sale nook, I think. Next is, um, Jareg by Stephen Brust. This is one of his, um, Taltos series of novels, which I think I picked up from Golden's Book Exchange a few years ago, and I haven't gotten to yet. Next is Lies of Descent, uh, book one of The Fallen Gods War by Troy Carroll Butcher. Um, this, if I remember correctly, came out in 2019. It's about um, two young people um, who are recruited into a sort of military organization that somehow gets involved in an epic conflict. Um, I don't, I liked part of the book, but I kind of fell out of it and I think I did end up bailing on it. Or if not that, then I don't quite remember much of um, it, but it's one of those books that I read towards the end of 2019 that sort of snowballed my problems with fiction that have plagued me for the in the year since. Um, next is Ethan of Athos by Louis McMaster Bujold. This is um, a space opera set in the Vorkosigan, um series that Bujold wrote in the 70s, 80s, and I guess into the 90s, and she might still be writing them. Um, this is about a scientist from the planet Athos, which is exclusively male. He is left his home planet to search out um, a new uh, egg cultures so that they can repopulate the, pretty much continue the population because there are no women on Athos. And it's a terrible book. It's just so bad. It's, I wonder if, um, at this point, McBester Bujold knew any gay man at all, because, yeah. Well, yes, I mean, obviously, Athos is inspired by the monastery Athos in Greece. I don't think it quite translates. Anyway, another book by Lois McMaster Bujold I have is The Curse of Shalion. This is the first book in a fantasy series that I read, or I had to go out a few years ago, <coughs> excuse me, and didn't quite get on with. Um, and I don't quite know why I have this added it to my collection, but I did in a very poor <laughs> copy because it's probably going to fall apart at the next attempt to read it. Next is uh, John Carter of Mars, The Collection by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is an omnibus edition that includes a number of the John Carter novels. And they include A Princess of Mars, The Gods of Mars, The Warlord of Mars, Thuvia Made of Mars, and The Chessmen of Mars. Um, so I've been circling uh, the John Carter books for years. Um, I've pretty much, there's a copy of this at my local library. 
and I check it out periodically and have a go at um, A Princess of Mars, and I never quite got into it. And then, sometime two years ago, uh, there was a reading event where um, I think participants had a, read, I think at least A Princess of Mars. I don't know if they read the rest of this series or not. So I picked this up then and had another go and yeah, no. Um, next are two books by Jim Butcher. Uh, the first is Stormfront. I think this is the first book in the Dresden Files series. Uh, it's an urban fantasy series about an occult detective named um, Thomas Harry Dresden. Um, and I think I had to go at this one time and didn't quite get into it. And I bought it. I think I bought this from uh, Golden's, but I could be wrong. And I also have A Grave Peril by Jim Butcher, which is the third volume of the Dresden Files series. Um, this is Master of Sorrows uh, by Justin Call. Uh, I picked this up from Book Depository, and I actually don't know much about this book. Um, so I guess I'll read the back. Hidden from the world, acting from shadows, it trains its students. Oh, yes. The Academy of Shimbalu has stood against magic for centuries. Hidden from the world, acting from the shadows, it trains its students to detect and retrieve magic artifacts, which, is, which it je jealously guards from the misuse of others. Because magic is dangerous, something that heals can also harm, and a power that aids one person may destroy another. Of the Academy's many students, only the most skilled become avatars, warrior thieves capable of infiltrating the most heavily guarded vaults, and only the most determined are trusted to resist the lure of magic. More than anything, an Ev de Breath wants to become one of them. Oh, yeah, haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, the next two books are ones that I have read, and at least the first of them I really do like, and that is The City of Lost Fortunes by Brian Camp. This is an urban fantasy novel set in uh, post Katrina, New Orleans. It's the story of a Jude de Besson who is a demigod who has the ability to find lost objects. Um, he has, since Katrina, lived in hiding from the magical community of New Orleans uh, until one day he is brought back uh, to play a game of poker with uh, the fortune god of New Orleans as well as a number of other gods all playing for incredibly high stakes, the future of New Orleans. Um, I love this book. It was phenomenal. I read it tw three times, and I've loved it every time I've read it. This is just a fantastic book. Um, the sequel is Gather the Fortunes by Brian Camp, which I've read twice. And I'm not as fond of this book as I am of, of City of Lost Fortunes, um, in part because... Instead of Jude Dubesson being the main protagonist, he's a side character. He only appears in two scenes, I think. Um, this story is about um, Rene, Renaissance Rene Reigns, uh, who was a major character of the last book. In this book, she is a psychopomp who um, guides the souls of the dead into the underworld. When one day... Um, she uh, is um, approached by two gods um, that sort of see her um, not do her job um, as she should. But um, yeah, and then things snowball from there. And once again, New Orleans is under threat by uh, magical forces. So I didn't particularly care for this book as much as I did um, City of Lost Fortunes because I'm not particularly fond of Renaissance's Rene, Rene's character. Um, I don't think she's all that interesting. And I think the humor that 
of the first book is missing, and I think it's that's needed. Um, and also Miss Jude's character, because he's a blast. But anyway, that was Gather the Fortunes. Next is a Conan pastiche. This is Conan the Savage by Leonard Carpenter. Uh, this is a book I had oh, in the 90s. Um, and like I think the late 80s and early 90s, Tor had a series of, of Conan pastiches by a number of uh, writers. Among them, Robert Jordan, which who we will get to um, later. Um, and I had a few by Leonard Carpenter, and there's another one I have. So I had an, quite a few of these pastiches and got rid of them. And I saw this at Golden's a few years ago and picked it up. So in this one, Conan is sent to the mines as a prisoner. He escapes and he joins a tribe um, and becomes quite rather important leader among the tribe. At the same time, a young girl uh, has a magic doll who sort of possesses her. And she gradually becomes the sorceress queen of uh, Bithynia and gradually Sorceress Queen and Conan come into conflict, and it's just a very slow sort of creep until the climatic showdown between the two of them. Um, I remember quite liking the book at the time. I mean, I was in my mid-teens, so... Um, but I haven't read it since I picked it back up, which I probably should do. Next is Universe 10, edited by Terry. Universe 10, edited by Terry Carr. This is um, one of a number of uh, science fiction anthologies edited by Terry Carr. Um, this one is highly recommended by Steve Donahue, and I picked it up on his recommendation. Although when I read it last year, um, I didn't quite have as good of an experience with it as Steve has done. I mean, there are a few fairly good stories in here, but um, for the most part, I wasn't all that impressed. Badly. Next are a few books by Lynn Carter. This is The Black Star. This is The Enchantress of Worlds End. And this is The Warrior of World's End, which is the first book of that series. So I need to move that and Enchantress so I have them in order. Um, and I picked them all up from the Friends of the Library Books of Nook. I um, haven't gone to any of them yet. Uh, next is Almost Infamous by Matt Carter. This is a superhero novel um, about a young man who... Um, decides to become a supervillain. Uh, during his first outing, he accidentally kills um, a superhero and he is captured by the other superheroes and sent to an island where he and a number of young budding supervillains are forced to compete to become a supervillain team or the new supervillains in a world with that have seen most of the supervillains um, imprisoned without breaking out. And as the novel progresses, uh, the superheroes become more the villains than the villains are. Um, I, I think I had mixed opinions about this novel. It's been a while since I've read it, and I probably should come back to it eventually. Next is The Vore by B. Catling. Uh, this is a weird novel about an alternate Africa and a man, I think, seeking revenge or fleeing um, into the jungle and a very weird landscape it is. Um, I read it, oh, three, four years ago and I didn't particularly care for it. Um, I would have another go at it though at some point. And I picked it, and it came from originally from the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. Next is Breath of Earth by Beth Cato, um, which I haven't gotten around to reading yet. 
so. Uh, but it seems to be an alternate um, historical uh, fantasy novel. Next is uh, a portal fantasy. This is Red Moon and Black Mountain by Joy Chant. Uh, this is the story of, of four siblings, or th no, three siblings, um, who, while playing hooky from school, if I remember correctly, are transported to a fantasy world. Uh, the oldest brother is transported to um, a nomadic horse people where he is adopted and becomes a leader amongst these or people. Um, and he actually grows up into a young man while his siblings um, kind of don't age. Like, basically, there's also some kind of time travel, like time thing, because the brother, the eldest brother goes, I think, uh, much. Like, his time in this fantasy world is much longer than his siblings are. Although, I think when they return, they're, his, he's back to what his age should be. Um, while in its basically fighting an epic enemy. So anyway, which I think I, I thought it was all right, but not too impressive. And this is the sequel, I think, um, The Grey Mane of Mourning, or at least a, another fantasy book by her that I haven't uh, gotten around to yet. Picked both of them up from Golden's Book Exchange. And I actually think... This one had a conflict with war, my uh, n nephew. Because <laughs> I've had it for, oh, that one for ages. And the next three books are all by C.J. Cherry. This is uh, Fortress in the Eye of Time. Um, and then I have The Tree of Swords and Jewels. And I have the Faded Sun Trilogy. Um, all of these I picked up from Golden Book Exchange. And this one is a space opera about um, a super warrior society who act as mercenaries uh, for various um, interstellar players. They recently lost a war to the humans um, and are sort of left adrift and then there's a journey to, I think, find their original homeworld or something. Um, I read, had to go at the first book uh, two years ago, maybe, I don't remember, but I didn't quite have a whole lot of success with it. And then finally, The Pearls by Deborah Chester. Um, I picked this up because I previously picked up her... Uh, book on writing science fiction and fantasy. I think it's a fantasy fiction formula. And I wanted to see how she did it. She's a much better teacher of how to write than she is actually writing. But anyway, um, I think this is the story of um, a dark wizard or warrior who kidnaps a princess. And it's, it's a horrible book. I really do not like it at all. So anyway, book two, but that was part three of science fiction and fantasy, and of course, part 26 of the larger 2022 library tour. I will be back tomorrow with part 27 and part four of science fiction and fantasy. So until then, book two, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.